The Names of the Hells, Chapter Five, Commentary. This is the fifth chapter called "The Names of the Hells." What other hells? Who created the hells? Jails exist in the human realm as well as the underworld. In the human realm, the government builds prisons for criminals. Is it the same with prisons in the hells? No, the jails are not like the ones already built and ready in the human realm, so that criminals can simply be locked up. Different labels are given to forms of confinement in the hells, but they do not exist in physical form. The hells are invisible. Only when it is time for you to face your sentence do the hells appear. In other words, depending on your offense, the hells manifest as a certain type of jail. Neither people nor ghosts create this type of prisons. Individual karma does, depending on one's karma. A certain type of hell exists for one in the underworld. The underworld is always dark. There is no sun or moon. Depending on the offenses created, a certain type of hell occurs in the hells. The hell that is realized by the offenses you accumulate is quite an ingenious and inconceivable situation. This is why hells have names but no tangible substance. The hell appears when it is time for one to face one's offenses. Sutra. At that time, universal worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva said to Earth Star Bodhisattva, "Human one, for the sake of gods and dragons, those in the fourfold assembly, and all other beings of the present and future, please tell us the names of the hells where beings in the south world or the continent of Jambuvipa must suffer retributions for offenses they commit." Please also describe what happens during retributions undergone for evil deeds, so that beings in the future Dharma and the age will know what those retributions are. Commentary: At that time, Universal Worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Everyone knows Universal Worthy Bodhisattva. He rides on a white elephant with six tusks. The power of his conduct is the greatest. So he is also called Great Conduct, Universal Worthy Bodhisattva. This Great Bodhisattva said to Earth Star Bodhisattva, "He made one, another name for a Bodhisattva, for the sake of gods and dragons, those in the fourfold assembly, such as bhikshus, bhikshunis, upasakas, and upasikas, and all other beings of the present and future. Please tell us the names of the hells." Where beings in the Sahar world have to bear suffering, where beings on the southern continent of Jambuvipa must suffer retributions for offenses they commit, please also describe what happens during retributions undergone for evil deeds, so that beings in the future Dharma ending age will know what those serious retributions are in the hells. Sutra, Earth Star Bodhisattva replied. Human one, based on the awesome spiritual power of the Buddha and relying on your strength, great Bodhisattva, I will give a general list of the names of the hells and describe some of what happens during retributions undergone for offenses and evil deeds. Human one, in eastern Jambuvipa, there is a mountain range called the Iron Ring. That mountain range is pitch. Black, because the light of the sun and moon does not shine on it. A great hell named Ultimately Relentless is located there. Another hell is called Great Upper Sea. There is also a hell called Four Horns, a hell called Flying Knives. Commentary: Having heard Universal Worthy Bodhisattva's request, Earth Star Bodhisattva replied, "Human one, the compassionate individual that you are." Based on the awesome virtues and spiritual power of the Buddha, and relying on your strength, Great Bodhisattva, I will briefly give a general list of the names of the hells and describe some of what happens during retributions undergone for offenses and evil deeds. 
beings face a retribution for offenses that they create. Creating evil in the past, they face evil retribution. Doing good deeds, they face good retribution. Their houses are all about undergoing evil retribution. Human 1. Earth's double desire bar calls out again. In eastern Jambufi Park, there is a huge mountain range called the Iron Ring. That mountain range is pitch black because the light of the sun and moon does not can, cannot shine on it. It is so dark. It is as if one were in a cave. A great hell that is the biggest and tallest named ultimately relentless is located there. The relentless hell is one of the five types of relentless hells described earlier. Another hell is called Great RBC. RBC is Sanskrit for relentless. The one before is ultimately relentless. This one is relentless. There is also a hell called Four Horns. Four concerns or four directions which are east and west, north and south. This hell is called Four Horns because it is like there are four long, long horns in there. When beings enter this hell, they come in contact with these horns, dying and becoming born, becoming born then dying. There is also a hell called the flying knives. In this hell, knives from nowhere will come flying at hell beings. They may get their heads chopped off, get their arms axed, injure their bodies, bleed a lot and die from stabs. They are stabbed so that their body hurts their legs hurt just when the pain seems to alleviate knives come flying and stopping at them again they hurt again and again this is the hell of flying knives which is most miserable sutra a hell called fiery arrows a hell called squeezing mountains a hell called piercing spears a hell called iron carts a hell called iron beds a hell called iron option, a hell called iron clothing. Commentary There is also a hell called fiery arrows. There are many arrows on fire in this fiery arrows hell. The fiery arrows in this hell are similar to the rockets that go to the moon. However, the fiery arrows in this hell are extremely harsh. They are retribution for people who committed offenses. There is also a hell called squeezing mountains. In this other kind of hell, people suffer severely. First, the gate is the, uh, the hell opens, so hell beings start running out as if criminals escaping the penitentiary. They believe they will be free if they just run out, but they do not realize that as soon as they run out of the house, they see two mountains which they head straight for during their gateway, during their getaway. But these mountains start to move and close in on them from all sides, squeezing them into bloody hamburger patties. Not only is the eastern gate to this hell this way, the other gates in the west, in the west, north and south are the same. Hell beings do not realize that they escape through the open door and into the mountains which is still within their house. Why? It is because these beings' offense commas are so profound that they have to face their retribution anywhere they go, experiencing intolerable torture. Why would individuals have to experience the consequences of squeezing mountains? They harshly oppressed others with authority, for example, so they face this retribution after death. There is also a hell called piercing spears. Arrows are thinner and smaller than spears. The head of spears are larger enough to stop people to death. In, in this piercing, piercing spears hell, spears may be coming from the front, back, left or right. People's bodies are punctured with many holes as if they have many windows and doors to their body. This is the piercing spear's hell, 
which is difficult to bear as well. Furthermore, there is a hell called the iron cuts. In this kind of hell, iron cuts drive other hell beings. In one of Shakyamuni Buddha's former lives, he had the power of the heavenly eye, so he saw horn harsh beings in this hell suffered as iron cuts rolled over their bodies. He was moved with compassion and thought, I will definitely cultivate to become a Buddha so that in the future I will save beings in their house. This was one of the earlier compassionate results of Shakyamuni Buddha. There is also a hell called the Iron Bed. Sit or sleep on an iron bed and many red hot knives heated in a fire will grow. Offenders are ordered to lie on this bed. There is also a hell called the iron option. The iron option is this hell in this hell all have horns with which they ears to butt offenders, causing them pain. There is also a hell called the ironing clothing. People who receive the precepts but broke them will fall into the iron clothing hell. What is this hell like? There are lots of knives with hooks in this hell that poke at this hell being and rip apart their clothes. Unclothed, a set of metallic attire comes from the sky so that the offenders will wave their hands and say, Come, come close. The clothing comes over when they wave them over. When they wave their hands, these clothes arrive. Helpings are wrapped with these metal pieces, all of which are scorched red hot. Scorched red hot. When they wear these clothes, they burn themselves so that their body is burned and turned into ash. Once they turn into ash, the clever wind blows over and beings that disappeared appear in physical form again. This is the iron clothing hell. Sutra, a hell called the thousand blades, a hell called the iron axis, a hell called the molten copper, a hell called the embracing pillar, a hell called the flowing fire, a hell called the blowing tongues, a hell called the hacking heads, a hell called the burning feet, a hell called the pecking eyes, a hell called the iron pellets. Commentary A hell called thousand blades occurs because of the numerous amount of offense commas that took place. People who fall into this hell will have millions and millions of knives rain on them. These knives are like raindrops that drop off offenders' heads, slice their bodies into pieces, split their bones and flesh into smithereens, and then they die. After death, a type of clever wind blows over and they live again to endure this type of offense. There is also a hell called Iron Axis, where Iron Axis step on offenders' body, walking back uh, and forth on them. There is also a hell called Molten Copper, that plays a hell beings in Molten Copper. Since copper melts in there, people do too. There is also a hell called the embracing pillar. I explained this during my Suragama Sutra lectures, but people have forgotten, I am afraid. The embracing pillar hell is where people embrace this fiery hot copper pillar and cannot unglue themselves from it. Why do people fall into this type of hell? It is because they are licentious. Both lustful males and females engage in too many lewd acts in their lifetimes, so they fall into this embracing pillar hell after death. A man who falls into this hell will see a copper pillar as his most beloved female and will go over and hold her. But the fiery hot copper pillar will be burned and kill him. The clever wind blows over though and he lives again. The embrace, burning, and death occur again and again. Males see this pillar as females, whereas females see this pillar as their favorite man, so they cannot help but run over and hug. When they do, they are burned into ash. 
by the fire of this copper pillar. When the clever wind blows over them, they are leaf again. Then they again run over to embrace the pillar, then die again, and then live again to embrace again. What makes them embrace and suffer? Suffer then die, die only to live again to suffer. Does someone replan this? No, this hell is created by their karma of lust, whether male or female. Being in love is not a good thing. If you walk down the wrong path, you will fall into the hell of embracing pillar, which is most miserable.